Good morning, Cole Al Baptists. I'm so glad that you could join us for this daily devotion time. We're in the book of Colossians, and today we're going to talk about the greatest identity. The greatest identity. Well, in verse 10 of chapter 3 in Colossians, the Bible says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him, where there's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Well, there must be something to individuals that gives them good feelings uh, about identifying themselves with certain groups. University of Kentucky professor and also psychologist said that much of our self-esteem comes from feeling better about ourselves than about others because of the group we belong to. Well, that just shows you one thing, something that everybody knows. Prejudice is not an easy thing to overcome. It's ingrained in the individual. It, it arises from pride. It in, arises from the fact that we're sinful and we have a sense of guilt because of that. And so we're always reaching for something to make us feel better about ourselves. And unfortunately, bias is one of those things. And one reason that prejudice is difficult to overcome is that practically everyone denies that they are prejudiced or that they've been prejudiced or that they're capable of being prejudiced. A lot of folks when confronted would say, oh I'm not prejudiced and oh I've never been prejudiced but that's usually and I would say most frequently and studies show that that is absolutely not the case. Everyone wrestles with some kind of a notion at some point or maybe many points in their life of feeling better about themselves because of a particular group that they belong to. It might be that they're a college graduate and they feel better about themselves than those that haven't graduated from college. It may be that they're wealthy and they feel better about themselves because uh, they have a little money and others don't. It may be something to do with race. They feel better because they're of a certain uh, skin pigmentation or race. That's very, very uh, common in the heart of man. And, but we need to realize that we must admit that we are capable of being prejudiced. One time I was watching television and I saw a man and uh, the commentator asked the man about him being capable of being prejudiced. And this man vehemently, in the strongest possible terms, denied that he was prejudiced. As a matter of fact, he even went so far as to say it was impossible for him to be prejudiced. That prejudice and the criticism of being biased does not apply to him. His reasoning was is because he was a part of a minority race that it would be impossible for him to ever be prejudiced. Well, any thinking person would know that that's absolutely not true. Evidently, prejudice is something that man's been dealing with ever since the dawn of time and he's been uh, puffed up with pride for one false reason or another and it's kind of a, a, a sad thing. One newspaper article that was uh, recently published indicated that at one point almost every individual has harbored ill will toward another individual because of bias. But that's where the Christian ought to be different. And that's the Apostle Paul's uh, teaching here in the book of Colossians. 
He talks about in verse 10 how we've been we've put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. And so he calls back the knowledge of creation, how that God created man, and that man's created in the image of God, and that all of us are related because all of us go back to that original uh, creation. And when we're recreated in Christ, that is, we're born again, we become a child of God. And so we're not only connected in the fact that we're all a creation of God originally, we're all the human race, but then when we're saved, that's when we become a child of God. And that makes us more greatly appreciate the creation event and appreciate how we're connected through creation. And then we especially appreciate the fact that we're all the children of God when we're born again. And that's such a, a, a blessing. Well, uh, this has a effect. It brings an identity to us. He says, there's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond to free, but Christ is all and in all. So the greatest identity is in Christ. Uh, certainly, you may have been born in Arizona and you're a native from Arizona. You might have been born in uh, Florida. You're a native Floridian. Well, praise the Lord for that. God knew where you'd be born. But my friend, that's not the greatest identity. The greatest identity that you and I have is that we are believers in Christ, that we are children of God. And that drives our actions. What's the result of that? Well, the result of that is this. There's no distinctions. The distinctions fall by the wayside. The biases and the prejudices have to give way to this dominant thought that we're one in Christ. In verse 11 it says, where there's neither Greek nor Jew, and then so on. Notice that word neither. That means that stuff that individuals like to hyper-identify themselves with, that doesn't apply for the believer any longer. That stuff is non-existent for the believer in their heart because they see people they see their brothers and sisters in Christ, and that drives their action to lay down all these cruel and hateful distinctions. And then the driving force becomes love. And so he says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have quarrel against them, any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. So, the thing that drives us now that we're siblings, spiritual siblings, we're brothers and sisters in Christ, we're all one part of one thing, the family of God because we've been born again, then what drives us is our love for one another. That means we're forgiving. That means we're patient. That means that we're considerate. That means that we're kind. That means we're trying to practice humbleness of mind and looking on the needs of others. It means that we're long-suffering. We're patient. We're uh, willing to forgive. All of those things. And then it tells us that this is what matures us because it says, above all things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. That means we're matured. We're being what Jesus wants us to be. It's interesting to me that lately... Almost every time that we come together, or not um, not every time, almost every time, but very frequently lately, we've come together, whether it be by way of devotion or in the Sunday morning sermons. Boy, the Lord has just been leading us time and time again to passages that speak about Christian love. And I think that's possibly because of the fact that it's just a coincidence and maybe the Lord uh, looks like he's working in that way. But it's also true that practically anywhere you open up the New Testament, you're going to find that that's a dominant truth. And so it's really not as much a coincidence as it is the probability is if you're teaching on the Bible, you're going to come across this subject of love. And so what happens, because we've been born again, the distinctions fall by the wayside, 
Love becomes the drawing force in our life, and that matures us, and then finally it brings peace. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you also are called in one body, and be ye thankful. A lot of friction, a lot of, of uh, hardship, and a lot of hurt is caused by bias. I think back many, many years ago now, it's hard to believe, but it was many years ago when we had the L.A. riots. All sparked by that undercurrent of hate and prejudice and bias uh, toward individuals just based on who, who they were. When it shouldn't have happened. And my friend, it shouldn't, it's still happening today where we look in some of our cities and there's gangs that are grouped in groups. And if you look at those groups of gangs, many of them are linked together because of some common thing that makes them alike, and yet that whole purpose of those gangs is to fight and to kill and to have friction. But here the Bible tells us that all those kinds of frictions fall by the wayside, and the peace of God rules in our heart. Because we don't see these distinctions, we see Jesus. We don't make these prejudiced uh, decisions. We see Christ and we act in love. That's why being a true Christian is so valuable to a culture. It's so valuable to a society. And so I hope that you're reaching out in love. And if that old ugly thing called prejudice ever comes into your heart, I was talking about if prejudice, the ugliness of prejudice ever comes into our heart. What do we do? Well, we confess it to God, first of all, and then we commit ourselves to love and recognizing that we're one in Christ. And that ought to be the habit of the believer. Well, God bless you as you love one another. Hey, I hope you're enjoying these devotion times. I am going to be trying to give some things away, and if you're interested in having some of these things, let me know and I'll send them to you. We uh, ordered some little small hymnals, and these hymnals have are wonderful. Probably the biggest problem is the writing is very, very small, so they're, they're, it's difficult to use in some of our ministry, And uh, but they're just sitting on the shelf, and I'd like to see that you could have one of these. I have about four right now, and so if you'll email me or call me, I'll send you this, and this will be a blessing because we not only need to have our Bible for our devotion time, but I always like to advise and counsel people to have a good hymnal in the house. That way you can read through the words, sometimes you can sing the songs, and it's just a, a blessing uh, as you look through a hymnal. And so if you'd like one of those, the first four people that email me or write me, I'll, I'll uh, give this to you, I'll mail it to you, and hopefully you'll do that. Then don't forget also that tomorrow we're going to be having hamburgers for lunch. It's a pickup situation. If you'd like to pick up a hamburger, then be sure and let us know here in the office and put your order in for how many you'd like to have. And we're thankful to Brother Dwight preparing that. We're just trying to do some new things and different things as we're going through this social distancing. We trust it'll be a blessing to you. And these are, this is real uh, ground beef, not these prefab hamburger patties, but uh, it's going to be really great, and so hope that you'll uh, put your order in. Thank you for uh, listening, and we sure are missing you guys. Man, oh man, it's, we are glad we have these devotions and are able to streamcast, but it's just not the same as seeing you guys. And we're praying for you guys. We miss you, and if you need anything at all, please let us know. We want to do our best to help meet needs. God bless you, and have a great day.